let's say we have a curve that has a function of y is equal to square root of x and we're going to look at what happens if they rotate about the x-axis like this when they start to rotate and we're going to rotate the view to have a better understanding as you can see here when they rotate eventually the x-axis will act like the center of rotations and the motion is eventually a circular motion if you want to form a solid eventually it looks like a cone why? because this is a curve so the radius is eventually decreases along the line where the outermost here have a longest radius but we go inward eventually we have a smaller in radius this is why we have a shape of cone in order to find the volume of a cone we can say that we're going to form more and more circles in the region like this when we fill up the cone with more and more circles the thickness of a circle is going to be thinner and thinner and thinner so it's better to fill up the gap without leaving any gap in between so that's why we can say that if we find the summation of the area of a circle in the regions they will tell us the volume of the revolutions or the volume of the solid that they form now we're going to look at what happened to a horizontal line when they revolve around the x-axis like this so if you want to have a better view we're going to rotate the view and look at the motions eventually it turns out to be a circular motion like just now but what's the difference is they form a solid that has a constant radius from one end to another end because this is a horizontal line this is why they always have the same radius from the center in order to find the volume of this cylinder we're going to increase the number of circles in the regions we say that if we keep increasing the number of circles inside the regions where the thickness of the circles become thinner and thinner and thinner they're going to fill up the gaps better at one point they will fill up the entire gap and left with literally no gap at all at that point we will say that the area of the circles if we sum up all the area of a circles they are eventually same as the volume of the solid because you can see that there's no gap in between in the end we have about 100 of the circles inside the regions let's say we have a straight line of function y is equal to x and now we're going to rotate about the x-axis by 360 degree from a to b so we start rotate 180 degree and now going up 360 degree so 360 degree of revolution will give us a pathway of a circular pathway and now when you think of the revolution about the x-axis you can think of the x-axis will act like the center of our rotations so basically it's just like a mirror you can think of in 2d way and it will reflect like a pathway like this so wherever that let's say this is the 10 cm and we're going to have the same that below the x-axis is also going to be 10 cm since we are curious about finding the volume of the solid that we created by this line so we're going to fill up the entire region by a lot of the circles like this like just now we see in the animation and since we said this is the center of the rotations so from the centers go to the circumference is going to be our radius of the circles and this shape is eventually a cone so this from a to b is the height of the cone and now we're going to look at how can we find the volume of the entire region that created by this line as we said just now we're going to sum up all the individual tiny circles and that is going to be our volumes and now we're going to look at one of the circles first so these circles we want to find the area of a circles first we need to know what is the radius and the area of a circle is just going to be a is equal to pi r square but what is the radius of one circle basically the length of the radius is going to be same as our y value of our functions so if this one have 5 then we say that the radius is 5 so radius is basically just the y variables so we can say that our r can be replaced with y so this is why we have a is equal to pi y square but remember this is only one circles but we're going to fill up with 
a bunch of small circles like this. And the best way to find the summation of all of the area of a circle is by using integrations. Because integration will help us to sum up all of the tiny small pieces of things. So you can see that the volume is just the integration from A to B and add up all the area of a circle that is bounded to the x axis. Dx means that we're going to rotate about the x axis. What is our area? It's just going to be pi y square. And bam, now we have the formula for volume of revolution that about the x axis. So pi y square is just the circles that are going to rotate about the x axis from region A to B. And now we're going to look at one example. So let's say we have the boundary from 0 to 1. So we can fill up the A and B to become 0 to 1. Since we are looking for the volume that is rotated about the x axis, this is why we use the formula of pi y square dx. And now we're going to find out what is our y square first. So we look at the equations, we have y is equal to x. So in order to find the y square, we square both sides. This is why we have y square is equivalent to x square. And now we can just substitute into our equations become like this. Since now we have the x variables and we are integrating with respect to x and we are good to go. So we can say that v is equivalent to take out the constant first and integrate x squared. Power increased by 1 divided by the new power and the boundary is going to be 0 to 1. And now we just need to take the upper limit minus the lower limit like this and we have the answer of 1 third of pi unit cube. We still have the same function which is y is equal to x but now we're going to look at what happened if they rotate about the y axis by 360 degree. Think of the 2D perspective first. The y axis will become the center of rotations. And we can draw the line just act like this is a mirror like this where we have the same distance from here to here. And now we're going to start to rotate by 360 degree like this. We're going to fill up the entire region with a lot of circles like just now. So like before, this thing from the center to the circumference is just the radius of the circles. And from B to A, it's just going to be the height of our cone. So if you want to find the volume of these regions of the solid, we're going to add up all the circles that we draw. So take one circle out first and find the area of these circles. Since we know it's just going to be the a is equal to pi r squared for one circle. But what is our r here? So our radius is basically just same as the x value of our curve or our functions. Because if this is 5, then we say that radius is 5. If this x is 3, then we say that our radius is 3. So it's basically just our x value. So we can substitute our r with x. This is why we have a is equal to pi x squared. Like just now, the volume can only be counted when we find all of the area of the circles. But there's too many circles here, so we're going to use the integration to sum up all the area of the circles that rotate about the y-axis. But what is our area? It's just pi x squared. So this is going to be the formula of the revolution about the y-axis. Basically, the pi x squared is the circles that we form that is rotated about the y-axis from A to B. Now we're going to look at one example. So let's say we have a boundary from 0 to 2 in the y-axis and this line is going to revolve around the y-axis for 360 degrees. So we know since we revolve around the y-axis, we're going to use dy and the integration of pi x squared. So what is our x squared here? Because we have integration of respect to y, but this x must be definitely going to be replaced by something in terms of y. So if we have y is equal to x, so we're going to square both sides first, we have x square is equivalent to y square. So this is how we will replace our x square with y square, like this. Then now we have y and we are integrating with respect to y, so it's good enough to carry on. So we're going to take out our pi first, and then integration of y square, the power increased by 1 divided by the new power limit from 0 to 2. Like this, 
Then after that, we're just going to take the upper limit minus the lower limit like this. And we're going to have the answer of add over 3 pi unit cube. And this answer is going to tell us that the volume of this solid is going to be add over 3 pi unit cube. So eventually, we can prove this one by just finding the volume of a cone. What's the formula for volume of a cone again? It's just 1 over 3 pi r square hash. So what is our radius? As we know, our radius is just going to be 2. Because when y is equal to 2, x is also equivalent to 2. So we know our radius is going to be 2. We're going to substitute into our equations here. 1 over 3 pi, 2 squared times the height. The height is going to be from the 0 to 2, right? It's our boundary. If we calculate this one, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 1 over 3 is going to be 8 over 3 pi. We have the same answer. Because basically, when we revolve around the y-axis, we are forming the solid of corn. So now let's have a recap. Whenever we are revolve around the x-axis, we're going to have dx. If this is dx, of course the circles that we're going to form is going to be pi y squared. The radius is going to be the same as the y value that we have. Meanwhile, if you revolve around the y-axis, we have dy. But since now the radius is here, it's same as the x value. This is why we have pi x squared. The easy way of thinking of, just remember like, if you revolve around the x-axis, this must be y. If you revolve around the y-axis, the one in the middle must be x, just the counterpart of it. And one more thing I need to know is, if we have a straight line, like a horizontal line or a vertical line, when they revolve around the axis, eventually they are not forming the cone. Because if you have a straight line, this one is a uniform. Because all of them have the same radius. So eventually they will form a solid that is a cylinder. So just remember, if you have a vertical line or a horizontal line, the solid that you will form is a cylinder and that's all for volume of revolutions. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.